2A, arise to give the following statement on behalf of the House Business Committee, which met on Tuesday, 24th, September 2024, to prioritize uh, business for consideration during the week. Honorable Speaker, with regard to the business for Tuesday next week, the House is expected to consider the following bills, if not concluded today. Committee of the whole House is on consideration of safety and, and feed safety control coordination bill 2023, in consideration of Senate amendment to the statutory instruments amendment bill of 2023. The Honorable Speaker will be having the second reading of the following bills if they will not be concluded today. The Technopolis bill of 2024, the Kenya National Library Service Bill 2023, and the Equalization Fund Administration Bill, which is Senate Bill Number 14 of 2023. Additionally, Honorable Speaker, debate will also be undertaken on the following motions, should they not be concluded today. One, consideration of the Senate Amendment to the Food and Safety and Feed Safety Control Coordination Bill of 2023, consideration of Senate Amendments to the Statutory Instruments Amendment Bill of 2023, Three, first report on the implementation status of the House resolutions on the committee reports and public petitions. Report on the alleged unfair trade practices by foreign investors in Kenya. Second report on employment diversity audit in uh, public institutions. Report of the extraordinary session of the sixth Pan-African Parliament, that is PAP. Consideration of reports on financial statements of state corporations uh, of the Nyanza Regional Honorable Speaker. And finally, the consideration of session of paper number five of 2023 on the national policy on labor, on labor migration. Honorable Speaker, in accordance with the provisions of the standing order number 42A5 and 6, I wish to convey that the Cabinet Secretary for Environment, Climate Change and Forestry is scheduled to appear before the House on the afternoon of Wednesday, 2nd October 2024 to respond to the following questions. One, question number three or four of 2023, sorry, by the member for Alego Usonga, the Honorable Samuel Atandi, regarding issuance of alliances for construction of residential property on plot number LR number 33734. A stroke 338 along Othaya Road, Kilaleshwa, by the National Environment and Management Authority without public participation. Question number 029-24, by the member for Maragua, the Honorable Wamaua, regarding report on the COH, uh, commonly known as Mandazi, regarding the presence of Lalela Company Limited and Naraitoi Company Limited, that are engaging in large-scale irrigation-based farming along a Malo River and cloud seeding activities. Honorable Speaker, the Minister will also be answering question number 106 to 2024 by the Member for Westlands, the Honorable Timo de Wanyonyi, regarding the measures put in place to reclaim, safeguard, and sustain all riparian areas and vulnerable ecosystems within their country. Further, the Honorable, uh, the, the, the Cabinet Secretary will also be responding to question number 107 20, of 2024 by the member for Nakuru County, the Honorable Lisa Chelule, regarding the preservation of wetlands and catchment areas within the country and the government's plan in conjunction with Community Forest Association Nationwide to plant 15 billion trees within the next decade. Question number 129 of 2024 by the member for Waraka, the Honorable T.J. Kajuang, regarding the Nairobi River pollution and the reasons for continued de uh, contamination despite interventions made over the years by various institutions. Honorable Speaker, the Minister will also be answering question number 130 of 2024 by the member for Tigania West, the Honorable Dr. John Mtunga, regarding key actors and benefits gained through climate financing to fight issues arising from climate change. In conclusion, Honorable Speaker, the House Business Committee will also will be reconvening on Tuesday, 1st October 2024, to schedule business for the rest of that week. I now wish to lay this statement on the table of the House. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Chief Whip of the Majority Party. Honorable Members, before we call the next order, we acknowledge in the public gallery 
Nkubo Winners Academy from Imendi South Meru. On my behalf and on behalf of the house, we welcome the students and their teachers to the House of Parliament. Next order. Order number eight, motion, ratification of the protocol to the constitutive acts of the African Union relating to the Pan-African Parliament, resumption of debate. I understand this debate has some time to go. Who was on the floor? Okay, there is uh, nobody who was on the floor at the rise of the house. I have on the screen Rindikiri Mugambi. Are you for this? No. Dido Raso, are you for this? Mr. Speaker. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I wish to uh, contribute to this uh, particular motion and why it is necessary uh, for Kenya to sign uh, this very important uh, protocol that binds all African states and Kenya and others in particular. Honorable Speaker, the first OAU charter was signed on 25th May 1963 in the city of Addis Ababa in the Federal Republic of uh, Ethiopia. That was the formative uh, charter that brought the African countries together and it was also the stage and platform on and from where they started fighting for both emancipation and independence of the African countries, many of whom at that time were under colonialism. Honorable Speaker, on the 11th of uh, July 2000 in Lome, Togo, is when the African Constitutive Act which I believe is the current African Union Charter or the African Union Constitution was signed by 53 African countries. Uh, this had been preceded by the fourth extraordinary session of the African Union that uh, took place on 9th of September 1999 in the city of Sirt in Libya. Honorable Speaker, the reason why I'm going through those dates is to lay the ground for why this constitutive act is a very important document or charter for we the legislators or the leaders of this country to understand and also for it to form part of the Kenyan uh, uh, legal instrument as an African country. Honorable Speaker, when you look at the African Union, the Organization of Africa Union Charter at the beginning, it was largely addressing the issues of cooperation between Africans uh, about fighting for decolonization of territories that still were under the colonial rule and also emancipation of uh, the Africans wherever they were. But if you look at what is in the Constitutive Act, it addresses the important issues of our time. 
the issues of economic and social cooperation, the issues of uh, human rights and the rule of law, governance. A strong Africa that looks at partnership between uh, its people, its neighbors, and also the rights of uh, groups that are marginalized within uh, the countries, uh, women and youth. The role of civil society as among the objectives that are being pronounced in the African Union Constitutive Act. Honorable Speaker, in this particular instrument that I said is like the Africa Union Constitution, it talks more about peace and security. Africa has been bedeviled uh, by the scourge of conflict for a very long time. Today, the African Union has a peace and security commission that sits exactly like what happens in the Security Council to address issues of conflict on this continent. When you look at the old charter of OAU, it says non-interference in the internal affairs of uh, African states. So that means that whatever happens within an African state, the OAU was mute. But what this Constitutive Act actually does or says is that the Africa Union Commission were actually, we are bidding for the chairmanship of the Right Honorable uh, Raila Odinga, is more stronger today than what it was under OAU. Today, the commission has so many directorates under it, economic, social, educational, uh, uh, human rights uh, division, that is able to address uh, the issues of Africa. Madam Speaker, the other important things that you find in this Constitutive Act is the issue uh, that has to do with, uh, the, I mean, uh, uh, to do with uh, democracy, uh, good governance, and public participation. Madam Speaker, uh, before now, the African Union was not able to clearly talk about election in a member state. Kenya holds its election, it goes whatever direction, uh, maybe there is post-election violence. Africa Union was quiet about it. But under the Constitutive Act, they are concerned that the issues that happen in Kenya, if they are not good, then they have a, a ripple effect over the neighboring countries. So that is why Africa Union uh, uh, takes a cognizance of it. Madam Speaker, among other important things that this Constitutive Act addresses, is the issue of inter-African infrastructure. Vision Agenda 2063, African Free Trade Agreement. With this, you can see that there's more partnership, there's more engagement within the Africa Union. But I'm speaker, through the Constitutive Act, the structure or organization of the African Union is more pronounced. 
whereas it used to just have a very rudimentary structure of about four or five. With this, you have the executive, the Pan-African Parliament, the Court of Justice, specialized technical committees, the permanent representative committees, economic, social, and cultural council. So all this is encompassing that they want to address the issue of uh, the African continent and its people holistically. So for those many remarks, Madam Speaker, I support and ask my colleagues to support so that this particular instrument becomes an instrument within the laws of the land. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, the Honorable uh, Member for Buri, Honorable Mugambi. I can see your name is at the top. Oh, you don't want to speak to this? I'm the second. Okay. The Honorable Moses Kirima, Member for your Central Element. Thank you, Madam Chair, for giving me this uh, opportunity, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute on the send motion of the protocol. Madam Speaker, it's necessary for Kenya to be part of the world uh, countries when it comes to the rules which govern the protocols of various countries. The matter before the National Assembly today was ventilated very well by the committee concerned. It passed through all the processes which were required and it was seen after so searching and looking at all various articles in the same that in no way is it going to affect the country in form of taxpayers' money, in form of interfering with in, uh, current uh, inter, internal rules of the country, and it's going at the end of the day to be adapted and become part of the municipal law which govern this country and the countries involved in sending of the same protocol. As for that, it's a necessity taking into account that the world per se is becoming a, a village. Uh, it's like a village these days. It's a, it's a group of village whereby each country requires each other when it comes to the economic growth, export of labor, import of goods, and all other things which pertains to the same protocol. We cannot live alone. The country requires to be part and the parcel of those countries which share the same ideas and ideals and also same sentiments. And as for that, the protocol is necessary for this country, for it to prosper better and a little bit further than where we are. And also to be appreciated in those countries which are part of this protocol. And as for that, I therefore support the motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the Honorable Member for Wundani, Honorable Mashoka. Mashoka. Okay, those who want to contribute to this debate, kindly put the intervention button. The Honorable Member for Tarakaniti, Honorable Murugara. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam, Madam Speaker, allow me also to support this motion so that we are able to ratify the protocol to the Constitutive Act of the African Union relating to the Pan-African Parliament. It is important for the House to keep on noting every time we have such protocols that it's a requirement of our Constitution that once our country, Kenya, becomes a signatory to a protocol, international protocol, then that protocol ought to be brought to the House so that it is ratified to become binding on the country. After ratification, the protocol becomes part and parcel of our domestic laws. Therefore, we are bound. 
This is also pursuant to the Treaty Making and Ratification Act, which is Chapter 4D of the laws of the country. So upon approval or ratification of this protocol, Kenya is going to be part and parcel of the Act of the African Union, which is going to constitute the Pan-African Parliament. It's also important to observe that we are part and parcel of the Pan-African Parliament, and we have that chapter in this house which deals with the Pan-African Affairs. It's also important to note that we have been a member of the African Union since inception of the country in 1963 when we became independent. And we have steadfastly stood with the African Union. If, in fact, in the early 80s, uh, the late President Moy was the chairperson or the chairman of the African Union, as he used to be called. And we were very proud of that event during that epoch. Today, as we speak, we are presenting a formidable candidate for the chairmanship of the African Union Commission. And that is no other than the indefatigable right honorable Prime, former Prime Minister, Raila Amolo Odinga. And we wish him very well. He has the full backing of the country. I think we have gone out of our way to ensure that all the friendly countries that support uh, Kenya actually support his candidature. And we are just waiting to see how the voting would go, but we are almost certain that he's going to be elected as the chairperson. So this is very important because we are going to strengthen the Pan-African Parliament through this act which does constitute it. We will also be able to be part and parcel of Pan-Africanism in uh, Africa. It goes without again saying that our founding fathers of the African continent those days played a pivotal role in ensuring that Pan-Africanism spread. All the time we mention this, the late Kwame Nkrumah comes into play, uh, Mwalimu Jul Julius Nyerere, we had Jomo Kenyatta in Kenya, we had Sedasego in Senegal, and everywhere else. These were Pan-Africanists who stood for the African unity. And today, we should actually be edging towards the union of the African continent, so that we stop seeing ourselves just not as regional blocks, the East African community, the South African Development uh, um, Commission, um, the North African bloc, and whichever. We see ourselves as one continent transiting to an African state, where possibly we are going to have the African currency, amongst many other uh, trading issues that we should bring together and speak in one voice. So this is a very important act to be uh, executed by the African Union relating to the Pan-African Parliament, and as Kenyans, we should actually embrace this 100%. So as we wish the Right Honorable Ray Lord, uh, Amolo Odinga the very best for the chairmanship of the African Union, we confirm today we do support this ratification, which also goes towards showing that we are together with the African Union in issues re relating to Pan-Africanism. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I support. Thank you, the Honorable Member for Suba North, Honorable Milio Diambo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And Madam Speaker, I want to set for, say from the onset that I support uh, this motion. And Madam Speaker, I served in the Pan-African Parliament in uh, the 12th, in the 12th Parliament. And Madam Speaker, one of the reasons as I support this uh, protocol is that it addresses some of the reasons uh, for which I was not very keen to go back to Pan-African Parliament. But with this protocol, um, I'm really happy that they have actually addressed some of those issues. The Pan-African Parliament was a parliament with a lot of potential, it still has, but because it didn't have any teeth, it didn't have a legislative capacity, then it meant that we were basically meeting almost like a conference uh, where we make resolutions and nothing comes out of it. But now that it is being given a legislative mandate, it will give it teeth. 
Madam Speaker, um, under Article 3, it provides for the objectives of the Pan-African Parliament, which includes giving a voice to the African peoples and the diaspora. It also seeks to promote the principles of human and people's rights and democracy in Africa. It encourages good governance, respect for the rule of law, transparency and accountability in member states. It promotes peace, security, and stability in Africa. It seeks to strengthen continental solidarity, cooperation, and development, and build a sense of common destiny. Madam Speaker, the only um, issue that I'm noticing, even though it talks about ensuring that um, the languages that shall be spoken are the languages of the African Union, I would want to encourage especially our own uh, government to consider not only making sign language a language, as we had uh, said earlier today, but also to ensure that every school is taught right from primary French. And Madam Speaker, this is so that it actually uh, enhances integration and Pan-Africanism, because you find that sometimes you are much closer to countries that are far away from us uh, because of the issue of the language barrier. Madam Speaker, I'm happy under Article 4, it provides that at least two members of the five members um, that will be sent by countries shall be women. Madam Speaker, I'm happy that uh, the treaty uh, now looks at the const constitutive architecture and also mandate. I've spoken to the mandate, but even in terms of a constitutive architecture, the parliament as currently constituted uh, includes members who are members of our own parliaments. Like I was serving as a member of parliament when I was also a member of the Kenyan parliament. But now it will be constituted more like the East African parliament where members of parliament will not be members of uh, existing parliament. Um, Madam Speaker, they will be elected direct even though they will be serving in their uh, voting in their individual capacities. I want to thank the chair of JILAC uh, especially for making a connection of the important role of this and uh, the uh, hopeful re uh, uh, sorry election of uh, our party leader honorable Raila Molodinga uh, to the AU chairmanship because this is one of the organs of the AU and we are hoping once it takes on the leadership then uh, it will revamp uh, and that is why it is good that this should go ahead of that madam speaker one of the things that I also like is that it has also provided for rotation uh, of leadership and uh, uh, in the Bureau. This is one of the thorny issues, Madam Speaker, that has bedeviled this parliament. And I think there was a period for almost one year in the current uh, uh, Pan-African parliament that they couldn't move on because of the issue of rotation, because it was more in terms of a gentleman's agreement that they had agreed that they could move because based on, uh, I mean, there would be rotation uh, in South, like it was supposed to go to Southern Africa, and then there is uh, a problem that uh, now the Central African region wanted it and all that. It actually caused it not to function. Madam Speaker, if you have a situation where you have rotational leadership, then it would actually augur very well. Perhaps that is food for thought for us as a country, uh, that if you want to think about uh, dealing with the issues that bedevil us as a country every five years, maybe we could think about dividing the country into bigger regions and thinking about presidency in a rotational manner. Then we wouldn't be having the theatrics that we are seeing even right now because of uh, uh, the, the issues that some people feel like uh, if uh, we are not here now, we may have to wait another lifetime before we get into the presidency. It's something that we may need to think about seriously as a country. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, I do support. Thank you. The Honorable Member for Maraquet West, Honorable Timothy Toroitich. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for granting me an opportunity to contribute on this uh, very important report. Honorable Speaker, I rise to support this report on the consideration for ratification of the protocol to the consecutive constitutive act of the African Union relating to the Pan-African Parliament. Honorable Speaker, in this country we have an extremely progressive constitution. Under Article 2.6 of the constitution, it provides in very clear terms 
that any treaty ratified by parliament or by Kenya shall constitute part of the laws of this country. Honorable Speaker, Pan-African Parliament is a very important parliament in enhancing democracy within the African continent. Honorable Speaker, as a, as a continent, we share a similar history, we share a similar culture. It is only that after the Berlin Conference of 1885 that this continent was divided and taken over by various um, colonial regimes, and they, that is where we lost our identity, we lost our culture as an African continent. Honorable Speaker, it is time now that as a country, we ratify this uh, protocol so that we can go back and find our paths where we lost. Honorable Speaker, this parliament is very important because it's like a, a peer review in terms of our democracy in matters to do with, uh, to do with human rights, where countries will have representatives at the highest level in the African continent where they can share certain values that are admired across the African continent. Honorable Speaker, I have seen the report. The only issue I have with this report, Honorable Speaker, is looking critically at the report. It says that under pursuant to Article 118.1b of the Constitution on public participation and Section A3 of the Treaty Making and Ratification Act 2012, the committee placed advertisements in two local dailies on 16th November 2023, calling for submissions of memoranda on the subject matter. However, Honorable Speaker, it goes further to say the committee did not receive any memorandum for or against the ratification of the protocol. Honorable Speaker, that is quite unfortunate because the, it, the, something must be wrong. It's either the committee did not give out proper notice for public participation because it cannot be true that no one in the Republic of Kenya or even uh, managed to give an opinion on this protocol. Honorable Speaker, it is, it is something that can even be quashed by the courts. It's something that we must, uh, the committee and this house needs to take it uh, seriously because there was no input from the public as per the report of this committee. Honorable Speaker, what Honorable Odiambo, what's your point of order? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. With due respect to the Honorable Member, I sit in the Committee of Defense, and indeed the Committee of Defense gave a public notice uh, for public participation. But Madam Speaker, sometimes people don't give uh, uh, their views because uh, many people don't know what Pan-African uh, uh, Parliament does. And that's why this Constitutive Act is good, because then it will make it easier for people to even know what Pan-African Parliament does. But the Defense Committee, it is wrong because, again, for, uh, you know, the reason that it says that it may be taken to court, and if you have it in, on record, that we are the ones questioning whether we actually did that, and the Committee of Defense did do that. I sit there and I know that. Okay, you may proceed on the... Honorable Speaker, where I, I respect the opinion by the senior counsel, it is on record that... Uh, no memoranda was submitted to the committee. Give and take, um, it's okay, but uh, that is an issue of concern that- Honorable uh, Toroi, uh, Toroi teacher, I think you're casting aspersions on the House of Parliament, <laughs> and you have clearly been informed by a member of this committee that there was the advertisements duly done, but people, there were no responses. You cannot force members of the public to give memoranda. The most important thing is to show that you gave them an opportunity to be able to give their memorandums. You are also free as a member of parliament to even give your memorandum yourself. So let, I think you better withdraw that remark because you're, you're accusing the committee, yet you have received information from the committee. Honorable Speaker. Please withdraw that. I substitute it with the words that uh, I have read the report that despite notice being given, on the record, the report on record is clear that no report was received from the public. Honorable Speaker, as I proceed, I have uh, in the report, 
the benefits of that Kenya stands to enjoy by ratifying, Honorable Speaker, there are several benefits that we that uh, will accrue out of ratifying this protocol. Honorable Speaker, one as a country, we are demonstrating our commitment to to democratic values and principles of inclusivity, including citizen participation. Honorable Speaker, as I've said, we have a lot as a country. We have a lot as a continent that we cannot, we can learn, we can learn from each other. Honorable Speaker, Kenya is a progressive democracy. If you compare Kenya with other African uh, uh, countries in terms of how we uphold our democracy, I think, Honorable Speaker, it is a country that is admired, and these are values that we can export to other African countries when we ratify this protocol to establish uh, legally the Pan African Parliament. Honorable Speaker, also in matters, broader objectives in matters to do with African integration and unity. Honorable Speaker, we have uh, various, uh, for example, the East Af African community, where we have issues to do with integration. Honorable Speaker, I, I think this parliament, when we constitute it fully and we ratify this protocol, as a country, we can be able to advance our economic, uh, economic values and matters to do with African integration in this parliament. Honorable Speaker, also, the protocol would give Kenyan parliamentarians a voice of influence in shaping continental policies and initiatives. Honorable Speaker, as I've said, we have a progressive constitution which has been subject to interpretation by the courts. We have sent presidents in this country uh, through our jud uh, judiciary. Honorable Speaker, these are values that uh, other countries can learn uh, from us. Honorable Speaker, I support this particular ratification in totality, only that in future we need more participation in terms of involving Parliament. Honorable Speaker, there needs to be an amendment to the, uh, this protocol we call um, the Treaty Making and Ratification Act number 45 of 2012. If you read section, section 9 of that particular act, it says Parliament may approve a particular protocol with reservations or without reservations. Honorable Speaker, I, I want to challenge the committee to be able to table this protocol before the House before it is brought for ratification so that we can be able, during, as members of Parliament, we can engage and peruse this protocol before it is brought before this House, Pass 1 to Section 9 of the Treaty Making and Ratification Act of 2012. So that, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, I have no problem if uh, the Point Senior Council yes. wants to inform me. Thank you, uh, Honorable Member. Chair. Honorable member, I just wish to understand you, but I just wish to inform you that the reason I actually moved the Treaty Making and Ratification Act, and uh, without the Treaty Making and Ratification Act, you would not be debating. So the bill itself actually enables Parliament to debate the treaties. So, and the way treaties are made or negotiated we can only make reservations, we can't amend. I think I'm saying that because I've had other members saying that before, if you understand from international law, we cannot amend treaties, not in a parliament. You can only make reservations, you can't amend. Thank you. Uh, the, the Honorable Chairperson for the committee, uh, Honorable Koech. Uh, and Bomili or the Amber has done very well, but I also wanted to say, and that is why we are here, this is not, uh, it's not been passed yet. It has given you an opportunity to deliberate on it, and Parliament has, still has an opportunity to even reject it at this uh, point, if they deem unfit uh, to ratify this property. So it's still the property of Parliament. Public participation, uh, also, just to inform my colleague, is to allow you as members of Parliament to contribute. And another thing that I raised yesterday, if you remember, our speaker, is that Many members of parliament, particularly this parliament, I'm sorry to say that, do not even understand why, how Pan-African parliament do operate. 
and, and, and even to those who actually are in Pan-African Parliament. That is why they are not here, they are not even contributing, because many people have never understood how Pan-African Parliament operates. Thank you, honorable members. I think at this juncture, I would like to uh, recognize the presence of the following schools. Seated in the speaker's gallery is Molo Highway Secondary School from Molo Constituency, Nakuru County. And then seated in the public gallery is Pamela Scott Leldet Secondary School from Gai Constituency, Nakuru County. We also have Kilo Primary School, Kajado East Constituency, Kajado County. And I will give uh, the Honorable Member for Molo, Honorable Kimani Kuria, to welcome all the three schools on behalf of the National Assembly. Uh, thank you all very much, Honorable Speaker. I would really like to extend an invitation to the National Assembly, the great students of Molo Highway Secondary School, Rungai, and the Kajado West Constituency Schools to the National Assembly to observe the proceedings of this school. Honorable Speaker, if you would allow me, uh, Molo Highway Secondary School is one of the fastest growing schools in the constituency. Just five years into doing the, after doing their first KCAC, we had very excellent results for the last KCAC, having one student get a B plus, five get a C plus, three get a B, and one got a B minus, sending to university and one to the seminary, 10 students passing, making it to university. And this is a day school, honorable speaker. I'm very, I went to the school to, to launch to, to, for the Thanksgiving last Friday, and I promised them that we'll come and observe the process of parliament. Because, honorable speaker, I am a product of a day secondary school, a mixed day secondary school. And I see brilliant students like this, I am sure that you have the next biggest leaders in this country, the best engineers, the best doctors, and the best lawyers. And also, Honorable Speaker, this shows the importance of uh, National Government Constitutional Development Fund. When I became a member of parliament, this school had only one Mabati classroom. And you go to that school now, they have story buildings, they have labs, and that is what has helped them to have as infrastructure almost as good as those that, with the schools that NGCDF, yes, the schools like the, the one Honorable Milio Diabo went to, and therefore getting to, to post such excellent results. So congratulations, Molo Highway. We look forward to even better results this year, and welcome to Parliament. And if I may, Honorable Speaker, continue with my contribution on the ratification. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I, I rise to support the ratification of the Constitutive Act of the African Union relating to the African uh, uh, Parliament, the PAP, Honorable Speaker. Uh, this ratification refers to the formal process uh, uh, in which member states of, of Pan-African Parliament uh, approve and adopt the legal framework established in the, uh, in the establishment of the Pan-African Parliament. Honorable Speaker, the Pan-African Parliament is one of the organs of the African Union that is aimed at promoting peace, unity, democracy, good governance, human rights, and economic development. The protocol, Honorable Speaker, is, constituted, is properly constituted within the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. The protocol uh, will, uh, will advance, Honorable Speaker, the participation of African people in matters of governance. It will uphold democratic principles, protect human rights, and promote good governance across the African continent by joining the voice and listening to the voice of the African people and those of the African people in the diaspora. Honorable Speaker, Kenya stands to enjoy a plethora of benefits through the ratification of this protocol, which will include, among the following, Honorable Speaker, the demonstration of Kenya's commitment to democracy and the principle of achieving uh, inclusivity and active citizen participation. Honorable Speaker, this ratification will make Kenya uh, be able to contribute to the broader objectives of African legis uh, integration, legislation, and uh, forging of uh, unity, Honorable Speaker. The protocol, Honorable Speaker, will also give Kenya and Parliament a voice and an influence in shaping the continental policies and initiatives. 
and number four, honorable speaker, this active participation on the Pan-African Parliament would raise the Kenyan voice profile in the AU and also in the continental stage, honorable speaker. On this, it's a, it's a great privilege that you have one gentleman in the name of Honorable Raita Arunda Bolera Odinga, whom Kenya has affronted to be the chairperson of African Union. And you're hoping that this will be a successful bid uh, for Kenya, that Kenya will be a proud uh, a holder of the chairmanship uh, of this uh, particular, uh, uh, particular uh, uh, individual honorable speaker. And this would in a way show gratitude to the many years of fighting for multi-party democracy, for fighting for what we call Ugatuzi. Honorable Speaker, when we were young people, we used to hear Raila Molo Odinga talk about Ugatuzi and Majimbo. And we actually thought that Ugatuzi was a very bad thing. We thought devolution was a very bad thing, that it would divide this country. But many years later, Honorable Speaker, after the enactment of the 2010 Constitution and the establishment of the 47 counties, we have seen development going towards the people. We have seen the people being involved in the, day, in the way their government is being run. Honorable Speaker, I've had a privilege of traveling across this country. And it is sad when you go to some constituencies that have never seen any inch of a tarmac road. You go to a constituency that has less than 10% of power uh, connectivity in that particular constituency, Honorable Speaker. And the hope is that this devolution that we fought for would cure these challenges, Honorable Speaker. And I'm hoping that our governors across the 47 counties, and it's great to see many governors who are working extremely hard and bringing a change in the, uh, in, in the counties, of, uh, Honorable Speaker, would use this devolution to bring not just development to the people, but also bring the participation of the voice of the people in their governance, Honorable Speaker, to the lowest units of devolution, Honorable Speaker. You know, there is one um, a great uh, uh, Pan-Africanist who said that the habit of democracy must be learned by practice. The people must learn by experience how to govern themselves. That was uh, uh, one voice, a great Pan-African uh, uh, Pan Pan and, uh, 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 and a sociologist honorable speaker. So I'm really hoping that this practice of the power of the people to govern themselves, both at the national uh, uh, forum and in the country forum, will bring out the best experience and give us the best leadership and will also enable the electorate and the voters at the five-year election cycle to evaluate their leaders from their words, from their development, and give us the best so that we can run this country and we can run uh, uh, this continent and so that we can continue to become one continent called Africa, one people called Africa, and hopefully in future even have one nation called Africa. Some of the challenges, Honorable Speaker, that we face, for example, fluctuations in our currencies, is because we all have our small currencies. If you are in Busia, for you to cross over to Uganda, you can hardly use uh, Kenya shillings to purchase something in Uganda. If you need to cross just next to the other border of, 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 of Tanzania, you have to change your currency again to Tanzania shillings. And worst of all, especially when you're dealing with uh, huge transactions, you have to change it to US dollars first, then convert it again to the local currency, Honorable Speaker. Our common market, you know, we, with such a huge population of Africa, we have such a huge market for, for products, but we, even despite us passing different protocols to, to, to allow free uh, trade movement across Africa, we still uh, uh, face bureaucracies and many barriers to trade, Honorable Speaker. It's, until recently, even traveling to one of our African countries, South Africa, you needed to have a visa. But you're hoping that now this collaboration in both free movement of goods, a free movement of people across the, uh, the continent, hopefully the establishment of an African uh, uh, bank and the establishment of an African continent will make us to live even closer together as one people the African people. Without a beg to support this application, honorable speaker, and congratulate the Committee on Defense for doing such a brilliant job in this report, honorable speaker. And perhaps lastly, to comment on um, uh, uh, what the, my, uh, my honorable friend from Malakwet said on public participation. Every piece of legislation that comes to this house has to go through public participation. But majority of times, 
despite uh, publishing in, in local dailies, Honorable Speaker, in, in the website, even parties that are directly involved or will be directly affected in these decisions do not even send a memoranda to Parliament. And maybe perhaps is the time we revisited the, the, the public participation bill, I think, that was introduced at the Senate, and give a criteria, because sometimes the language in which this legal framework in this legal language is put is not palatable for Northern Kenya. And maybe it's perhaps a high time we found out, we came up with a matrix of how to engage the public in these matters of public participation, so that this big concept, like the ratification of the con of the Constitutive Act of the Pan-African uh, Union relating to the Afri African Pan-African Parliament can be in a language that would be more palatable to an elderly Kenyan and make him be able to participate uh, on its uh, debate and legislation. Without a back support, Honorable Speaker. Well said. I think you came prepared for <laughs> the debate. The Honorable Member for Central Limente. It's in the House. He spoke already. So the Honorable Member for Taraka also spoke. The Honorable Member for Wajia North, the Honorable Sane. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The processes of, or the process of ratification of treaties, protocols, or any uh, bilateral agreement is so clear in our Constitution. And I think what we are debating is really what we are supposed to do. Kenya as a country has participated in the making of this uh, protocol, and there is all the purpose, intent, and the good is so expected out of it. More so when it is a Pan-African protocol, it goes without saying it is ours, and we are in the middle of it. Mr. Speaker, I don't know. There is some noise disturbing. Somebody must have dropped his phone, and I can't contribute. Mr. Speaker, treaties, protocols, and bilateral agreements ordinarily set, a, uh, set courtesy rules for parties to engage. They put mechanisms for international pledge, agreement, and ways of working together in a certain orderly manner. Treaties give common commitments where people agree together so that there are no conflicts. It is a matter of commonalities, not disagreements. It, is an, it gives opportunity to network among agreeing member states. Treaties showcase unity, Mr. Speaker. Unity of purpose, unity to troubleshoot just in case there are issues arising, and the unity to amalgamate in a very cohesive manner on purpose of social issues, economic issues, and political issues, and the Pan-African Parliament being brought on board will surely solve those three pillars which are key to this continent. Mr. Speaker, the protocol is a diplomatic tool. It's a diplomatic tool for engaging between African states. It is an interactive tool for reaction and relation. It aligns our values as Africans. We come from a common heritage and destiny. We have so much commonalities that hold us together as African states. It is like an economic block, a giant economic block, block though sleeping. So it aligns our values, goals, and even our identity as an African continent. What was once a source of uh, slave trade or human capital in, in, in the name of slavery can today come together in the form of a protocol or an international instrument to foster development, to agree on their own interest and come up with their homegrown initiative. That is what this protocol really looks up to. Mr. Speaker, it underscores that really we have a common history that is undeniable, that we Africans are brothers and sisters. 
we come from the same destiny, the same pedigree. That common destiny forces us to come together and discuss our own issues and come with local solutions to our problems, not always looking forward to foreigners. The answers to Africa's problems is in its own human capital and minds and intellectuals. Mr. Speaker, uh, in a nutshell, this protocol takes to a bigger, to a level, to higher level, the political horizon of discussing African matters. There are dreams of having a United States of Africa. Many have dreamed of that. Pan-Africanism, blocks, whichever blocks, the Southern Bloc, the East African community, we call by any name. All this is an African issue. This Pan-African Parliament will be a platform, an avenue, to at least take it to a higher horizon, learn together, research, and put it on a continental platform, Mr. Speaker. Not in our local entities, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda. These small entities no longer serve. The world is competing on a, on a broader scale economically, politically, militarily. So it is time 